something that I want you to see here. I want you to see the scripture. I want you to comment. Jesus said something. He said, say not that there are yet four months, then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes. Look on the fields, for they are white and all ready to harvest. Okay, so what was he saying? He said, yeah, the typical thing is, you know, uh, you hit a certain time in the natural where you say, okay, hey, well, four months and we're going to be harvesting the corn. We're going to be harvesting the, you know, I don't know, pumpkins or whatever. And, and he's saying, hey, that, that might be natural speaking, but he's saying, look, I want to adjust your perspective. Something is already happening. And that's what I want to focus on. Something of God is already happening. That's why, Anthony, you did a tremendous job as well as the team to put together these prophecies. Some of it is a little bit repetitive tonight. We want to do it on purpose because we want you to see what God has been saying and where we're, where we're going. And what I also want to I'll say to you is we are four months literally away from the scheduled election. This is time to be serious, man. We have got to not give any ounce of inch to the devil while men slept that's when the devil comes the plan i feel like to matt's point we talked about this yeah. somebody watched flashpoint last night and i really felt like by the way you didn't know this but for the first 20 minutes i was hearing every single word four times so if i was going when gene asked me a question well i think gene because i was trying to hear what i was saying so anyway but we talked about the importance of voting and uh, we talked about the importance of prayer. I want you to look at another scripture, Matthew 17, 21. Look at this scripture. And we understand as people of faith, but this is the other scripture that God dealt with me about uh, two days ago in prayer. He said, four months, there's a harvest. It's already in motion, Hank. And I need the people to step up their prayers. Okay. And he's, I said, well, like what, what kind of prayer? He said, imprecatory prayers. Pray against wickedness. And he said, also, I said to you, bind the thief. And he said, also, with that, mix it with fasting. There are certain things this verse represents was regarding a, 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 a spirit, a demon spirit of blindness. And Jesus is saying sometimes when it comes to the spirit world, it's not just to pray, sometimes when you mix it with fasting, you bring a, a greater dimension of breakthrough and results. And I really feel like uh, we need to really pray and fast for the next four months. I'm not saying do a four month fast, but, you know, find time to fast. And what we're going to do as a church, we're going to help lead the way. And I'm, I'm praying about how would you guys feel if I did some phone conferences calls with you where you can call in and we, we could pray together? And maybe like, you know, on a particular day, like a Monday morning, meet Pastor Hank for prayer. And then we, we fast breakfast or whatever. So I'm praying about that and what we could do. But how many would be open to that? Yeah, yeah. And here's the thing. I'm confident of what God has said. So don't yes. hear it as, well, Pastor, are you? No, I, I have not flinched and I'm not flinching. I'm just yeah. saying I'm tired of the buffoonery. Yeah. And I want a clean process. Yes. I want integrity and I don't want people to have to sit there and suffer. I'm tired of the innocent people like yourself having to deal with hardships and the enemy is trying everything that he can. All right. So when we look at this pulse tonight, what's, what stands out to you as the things that we're getting ready to talk about? Well, you know, one of the things just going back to what you and Pastor Matt had said, Pastor Hank, was with this harvest that's coming, you know, when you listen to some of these prophetic words. The one thing that kept coming to mind when I was going through these is, you know, thank God that we have the right to hear from our Heavenly Father. And I say that because when he gives a prophetic word and a direction and brings clarity, but also it gives you the opportunity to prepare and position yourself for that harvest according to that verse we just shared. And so what these what these prophecies are doing is it is giving you a direction and a clarity of where God is moving so that you can prepare and position yourself to receive the harvest by doing two things, confessing the word. So coming into agreement with these prophetic words, like Pastor Matt was saying, but also it's now time to act upon that. There are prophetic actions that we can do. Yes, we can vote, 
But there are other things we can do to step into, to come into agreement. That's fasting, that's sowing seed, that's coming to corporate prayer, that's coming to OTH. Folks, it's a, it's a, it's a concerted effort. It's not just coming to hear, but it's also doing that comes into agreement that allows God to legally come in and affect change, which is what you're getting ready to see. Pastor, oh, yes. God, things are going to, oh yes. man, it's going to yes. rock and roll. All right. And you know, another thing I wouldn't put past, I wouldn't put past the fact that sometimes people, I don't know how social media, where they try to mess up your registrations too. So, you know, just show up. <laughs> okay, yeah. here we go. So I want to look at slide one. And we're going to talk about uh, something that God, God said. And it goes back to uh, January 6th. Uh, I'm not here to say bad behavior, reckless behavior. But when you have, you know, your law enforcement inviting you in for a capital tour, that's, that's pretty interesting. And, and these people were there to pray. And, of course, you had some that maybe did some other things. But it was not... President Trump trying to bring some kind of insurrection and hostile, violent gathering. That's a bunch of baloney. And so I fasted and prayed that day. And I remember I asked the Lord specifically, I said, Lord, what, what, do, you, what, do, you, what, what do you want to say here? And he said to me, Hank, stay with the story that I've been saying. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, all the way back to 9-11, when God prophesied to those that were here that night, that out of New York, he would raise up a president that would bring our nation back on course. And, he, and that president would be born and from New York where the towers were attacked because he said there's more than just the attacking of the towers that is going on. There is major, God even said it, said there's major evil that he's going to expose with this person that he would choose that would rise up out of New York. And he said for the, each tower that uh, fell, I'll, I'll, I'll raise up a term. And most people don't know there were three towers how many knew that? There were three towers. There were one big tower on the left, one on the right, and there was one smaller one in the middle that got cut short. Interesting. So God is trying to play out his story, and it's important that we're hearing it. Kent Christmas called me today, and uh, we were getting into a great prophetic discussion, just comparing prophetic notes. And he said something that I want you to hear, especially those of you even on the phone. He said, you know, Hank, we are in a time where we have been in a drought for three and a half years. It's been literally three and a half years. You know, and he said, First Kings 17, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, and God said through him, at my word it shall not rain for what? These three and a half years. And then he said, what was the sign that eventually that the drought was being broken? I said, it was rain. And I said, Kent, we've been prophesying that God would bring abundance of rain. Right. We had seven to 10 inches here. They had record rains in Tennessee. And, and so we're seeing it right at the same time that all of this is, is, is taking place. And he said, what it's, it's a sign of Hank is that Jezebel's power is being broken. Yeah. Yes. And if, and, and if we ever need, if we ever need to stay in there, it's now. Because they are jockeying like crazy on how to keep their demonic agenda going. And God, like I said on Flashpoint last night, is putting his finger in and going, mm -mm, you can't touch this now. How many remember with the magicians? They could emulate the first four miracle, uh, plagues. But there came a point where the finger of God came in and said, look, the witchcraft realm, we can't touch this. And that's what's happening. That's why you're seeing all this buffoonery taking place. The devil is on the run. So let's look at what God said May 11th of 2023. And I want you to pay attention. Slide one. God says, so it will be, says the Spirit of God, that men have looked to the climate. And they say climate change, climate control. But they do not understand that the God of the times and seasons, even of the weather, I speak now and I say, look closely for there shall be extreme once again. Okay, now he's not saying how long this extreme is going to be. Are you, are you, pay attention. You say, but God, you, you've said this before. But God says, it's my season. It's not yours. So that automatically tells you God's not talking about a natural season. He's talking about his season. His purpose, his plan, his agenda, and it's not subject to winter, summer, spring, or fall. 
It's God's season. And he says, I've declared that you're in a season of a great fall. And when I spoke this, many said that it would surely come in the fall. So he's saying, I'm not talking necessarily about what you are thinking when you hear the word fall. How many understand that? He's saying, it's my season, but there's something that's going to fall. And they look to a time that could be calculated by the seasons of your very seasons. But I say that you're in the time now of my season. It is the great fall. It is the fall, and he's telling you what it is. You're going to start seeing fall of kingdoms. You're going to see fall of kings, or in God's way of saying it, leaders. It's the fall of leaders. It's the fall of corruption. Okay? So then God tells us now, how are we going to know that God's season is among us? He said the word extreme. But then he follows it up, slide two, same day, same year, with specifics on how to identify God's season of the fall, the great fall. He says, it's the fall even in the supreme, yes, even upon your supreme court. For I have come now to judge the judges of the earth. Pay attention to that. God's been dealing with me. There is coming, I'm telling you, and it's going to shock people of major shaking to the court we call supreme. I am not kidding you. It is going to, sh- God is going to shake that thing up so much you're not even going to recognize it. And that's part of his plan of reset. Okay. So he, he, he knows exactly what he's talking about. And I've now come to judge the judges of the earth, says the living God. And I'll give you judges as the first. And there'll come shakings as things even become more intense. And I want you to stop right there. I want to insert a scripture. Look at what God says in Isaiah chapter 10 about judges who don't judge correctly. And when God is the God of justice and his justice is in the earth, watch what he says. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Verse 3. Okay, okay, well, you can look at verse 2, I guess. And you turn aside the needy from judgment. But he also, in, in one translation and in the Hebrew, he literally calls out the judges. And he says in verse 3, listen, you are not going to get by with this. Because what will you do in the day of visitation, in the day of desolation, which shall come from afar? Now, one translation says, what are you going to do, judges, when you keep acting in injustice like we've seen? He said, what are you going to do when my anger shows up? And this is what God wants me to tell you. His anger is going towards injustice right now. His anger is going towards the wicked. Do not become empathetic with the left. And who they have as their fake leader. Don't. Remember what they've done. What they stand for. What they've stood for. Jesus said, know them by their fruits. Oh, believe me, we do. So he's saying, I'm coming. Now let's go back to the prophecy. I'll give you judges as the first and there'll come a shaking. And there'll be temperatures that will reach for what? For a season. He didn't say this season. Now, it happened that year, but what are you noticing now? Here we are in 2024, and it is, all the headlines are filled with extreme heat once again. Because God said, you're in his season of what? A great fall. And he's saying the way that you'll know it is it's going to be extreme, and it's going to be extreme temperatures for a season. Now, if you're thinking with your natural brain, you're going to think, oh, he's talking about that season. You have to be careful when God speaks, okay? And he does it on purpose. That's why he he spoke to the uh, disciples in parables, to get them to slow down and to listen with their spirit, okay? All right, anyway, that's another story. He said, it'll be in the hundreds. It'll be as though it would be 103, and he'll say, what is this? And God says, do you not know Psalms 103? Forget not my benefits. He said, it'll be 106 and 107, so he's coinciding it with the redemptive plan now of the book of Psalms. Do you not understand that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever? So that's Psalm 106, 107. Then I want you to go to the next slide, slide three, and he continues this. This is very interesting. And they will say, but God, what about 105? And the Lord says, do you not know that I led the people out with silver and gold and I delivered a nation? So he's saying in this season of the great fall, you see these temperatures, they coincide with my redemptive plan uh, that, that, 
is in Psalms and it has to do with deliverance of a nation. It has to do with my mercy. I'm trying to show you that I'm doing the opposite. And then now he says this and they'll say, what is this that's reached 118? And God says, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In other words, Hosanna, the Lord saves. He's trying to say, look, in my season, it's a great fall. I'm bringing unravelings. I'm bringing resets. I'm bringing reversals. I'm bringing removals. And the way that I'm showing you that my season is upon you is look to the extreme. Look to the heat. Look to these numbers. But ultimately know that I am saving your country. Amen. Any comments? Well, I think they have this slide, but can you show slide 3A? Because I want the people to see some of the headlines that have been coming up just to further confirm this prophecy you, and the season that we're in. Yeah, look, look at this. The hottest place on earth is cracking from the stress of extreme heat. So this is in Death Valley near California and the uh, Nevada border. Well, I thought maybe that was that fake Biden's house or something. <laughs> Hell starting to crack. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. But that's interesting to me that the hottest place on earth is starting to crack under the stress of extreme heat. That is very, very interesting. And to me, that is, that is a prophetic sign. Wow. Las Vegas, under most extreme heat wave in recorded history, meteorologists say, severe heat is scorching west and east coast and forecast offers little relief. And here's the other point that I saw. In one of the headlines from the Associated Press, it said the global temperatures in June was record temperatures again for the 13th straight month. Wow. And they said also that in Death Valley, uh, I believe there, I think it hit a temperature of 130 degrees. And they are, they are saying that since they started recording temperatures, which I don't know when that was, um, but they're basically saying that is the hottest temperature on earth recorded to this date. Now, there's another uh, prophecy, and I don't know if we brought it, but I, it just comes back to my recollector. How many have a recollector? Um, and I remember when God says that these temperatures are not always the way it's going to be, that you're going to say, I remember when. Because, again, it has to do with God's season. And that's why he's laughing. Oh, this is global warming. This is God's lap. Say, this is my season, and I'm showing you that my justice is moving. And I, I'm coming to save. Now, let's go to the next one. Let's go to slide four. Now, the next part, what we want to move into right now, is always remember what God said. He always has a redemptive plan. Jesus taught us in Luke 21, when you see things on the earth, hot temperatures, the sun, the moon, the stars, uh, distress of nations, he said, look up. In other words, adjust your perspective. Get your attention off of these things and look what is God saying what is God trying to show the earth what is God revealing that's why I said take a moment and quit looking at those things and look up adjust your perspective and I'll show you truth and he said and he gave us a principle when you look up know that your redemption draweth nigh but what he's really saying is as long as his spirit is in the earth which his Holy Spirit is still here he always has a redemptive plan, a plan of help and a plan of hope, even in the midst of signs in the sun, moon, stars, weather. Okay, how many got that? So God's redemptive plan of help and hope is unfolding right now. Okay, what then, Pastor Hank, would be the signs? How do we know? Listen to what God said. And this is really important because he revealed that there would be a pushback from the people. And he prophesied this many years ago, that there would come a pushback where people would say enough is enough. How many of you are at that place where you're pushing back? Okay, you're watching people push back. And he said the pushback would create a put it back and it'd literally be a movement. And he's talked about there would be specific signs that if you would look at these signs when they happen, you will know that God is in the middle of this put it back movement. And it's a sign of his redemptive plan. All right, look at slide four. This is very interesting. From 2004, laws are going to be overturned where there was no opportunity to have the Ten Commandments. I'm going to reinstate wow. it. Where they've tried to take prayer out of the schools, I'm going to reinstate it. All right? Yep. Look at that's, that's my favorite one because look at the date 2004. Okay, but now show, years ago. show, we're going to show another prophecy. Let's slow, uh, show slide five. 
eye. That's almost a tongue twister. That's so, so far. Okay, anyway, look, look here. This one is from 2011, all right? And this part I want you to explain, Anthony and Matthew. I want you to talk about this as well. God says very soon in America, February 27th, 2011, very soon in America, very soon, even in the steps of the Supreme Court, even in Florida, specifically Florida. For the Lord says, as it goes with Florida, it will go with the nation. All right. Really? Where, where is uh, 45 from now? Florida. Do you think God knew that in 2011? As it goes with Florida... Yep. It's going to go with the nation. He's, see, God speaks in mysteries, and we have yeah. to see it. Yeah. He says they'll arise, and they'll say, we want God back in our schools. Do you know that happened in Florida, and it's still happening right yep. now? Yep. They are leading the way. DeSantis and all of that, they're leading the way with this is happening. Yep. And they'll say, we want the Ten Commandments read and declared and hung in the uh, halls again. And God says there's legislation that shall go up from Florida to the high courts of the land that shall bring about change in America. For this is a decade where I will bring and establish joy and celebration. Now, you're reading this and everybody at that time would think, oh, this must be uh, the 2010 to 2020 decade. He's saying when you see the Ten Commandments being reinstated, look to that decade. And what has God been saying about this decade? It's going to be different. Yeah. It's going to start off harsh. That was 2019, God said it. Yeah. And he said it'll end up in rest and great celebration. Well, the Lord told us this in 2011. He said, listen, you're going to establish joy and celebration. Look around the nations and know that it speaks of change and the new season you're about to enter into. Now, look at the slides um, that I think coincide with this one. Isn't there another one? Or maybe is, I thought you had Ten Commandments slides. Oh, I do. Uh, let's see. Anyway, he's going to look 14. for slide 14. All right, show Moses. Okay. You want to hit on that? Sure. Okay, so that top uh, headline, if you look at the date, I believe that's from 2018. Yep, August 14, 2018. So uh, going back to that prophecy in 2011, what's interesting is that Florida has actually been leading the way since about 2004. There was this back and forth in the Florida Supreme Court about the, uh, the Bible uh, in, in the schools of Florida, so they obviously kicked that out. But ever since then, Florida has been fighting back to put God back in their school. So this was the beginning of it. 2018, which is not very talked about a whole lot, but they actually signed a bill and passed it into law under their constitution in Florida that in God we trust signs must be shown in all public schools in Florida. And so what's interesting about this is just like that prophecy said, you start to see one by one these various states start to do the same thing. In 2019, South Dakota did the same thing. And now you're looking at Texas fighting for that. Alabama, Louisiana, they all followed suit. And you can see some of those headlines right there that are showing the same thing. Wow. Now, one thing that is on the radar, Pastor, I didn't put this in here, but there is a prophecy that Pastor Hank gave about prayer being instituted back in the schools and look to Florida because they hold the keys. Did you know that if you look on ballotpedia.com, Florida has an initiative called Put Prayer Back in Schools that is going to be voted on in November of 2026. Guys, this is happening quickly and we are in that season right now. Well, so put it back. Anything you want to say and we'll go to the next. You're good? Okay, thank you, Matt. All right, so let's go to slide uh, seven. I want you to keep in mind the redemptive plan, the elements are speaking, it's the great fall, God's great fall, extreme temperatures, a put it back movement would arise, Ten Commandments would be one of the signs. Now look at slide seven, what God says, this is amazing, I'll read the part in the red. And so as there is a wonder in the heavens, there are signs, many signs that will begin to come. This is January 28th, 2018. Many signs will begin to come. Watch, United States, how I'm anointing the youth to rise up that will cause your courts that call supreme to say we cannot rule against us. Okay, what's been the attack? Yeah. It's been vicious against the young. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it will cause the movement that I've said to you before, put it back to be enforced. What am I saying? Watch, I'll invade your schools once again with yeah. prayer. So God's been speaking. He said, it's coming back. It's all shifting. Now you know why you've gone through all the warfare you've gone through. Now you know why the level of wickedness in leaders 
is, 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 is like it is. The enemy is afraid. God's word is happening. Look at slide eight. This is another one. This is why they've attacked the children, the libraries. He says, January 28th, the prophecy continues. Watch how I'll invade your schools once again of the scriptures. My word being spoken. My word being taught. And yes, let me give you another secret. The name of my son, Jesus, Yeshua, shall be spoken in your schools publicly, says the Lord. And I'm going to anoint the youth. I'm going to anoint the youth. I'm going to anoint the youth. He said it three times. And just as they changed the nation, they affected kings. Watch what I do in the next seven years to shift and turn around. Look at the date on that, though. Yeah, 2018. 2018 so seven. Seven. Yeah, that'd be 2025. 20, <laughs> I'm telling you, God. And, and January 28th, when is the inauguration? Isn't it January of 2025, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. God is telling No wonder they hate Donald Wait, Trump. I just, I just thought of something. Can you, can you go Listen, back? Listen, I think people are evil. You know, anyway, let's go ahead. Can, no. can, can you go back to that slide about extreme heat? Yeah. Um, I think it was uh, maybe just slide three. I just thought of something here. Oh, uh, slide, slide 3A, just with the, uh, the headline. I just saw something. The hottest place on earth is cracking from the stress of heat. Okay, and they call that place Death Valley. Yeah. Guys, God is using extreme heat to put the pressure on death. 2021 was the rec hottest temperature wow. on record. 2021. What happened in 2022? Roe versus Wade was overturned. Look at what God is doing. Yeah. That's really good. All right. I want to just, I'm going to read these next two very quickly, and then we're going to move on to another section. But I'm trying to tell, we're telling a story. I'm trying to get you to understand that. Slide 11. This is March 28th of 2021. And it starts off with Jairus' daughter um, would have been dead, and the Son of God would never have come and been raised with resurrection power of newness of life. But I've said... That you're coming into the new. So I'm going to see that. And I've not changed my mind. Therefore, what's the first thing? Your politics will change. And new will come. And it shall be what? Well, sounds like make America better again. Oh, that's great again. Okay. <laughs> Says the living God. Now, he's giving you specifics. What do we start looking for? Now, think about what's been attacked. Your schools. Elementary, come on, all that pornography and perversion in the elementary. Yeah, yeah. He said, junior high, high schools, your universities shall what? Quickly behold the new. For there will be, throwing, there'll be a throwing out and a throwing off of the vomit. They, that's why Montana, you can't read if you're a drag person, right, to their kids. They're throwing off the vomit. That has been of a prior season where they have tried to indoctrinate your children. There shall not be the new era. This shall not be the new era that I speak of. He said the new era is not going to have what you're seeing now. All right. Now look at this. This is really powerful. Slide 12. Now think about this. When this was being spoken, all of a sudden, right after that, you start seeing the revival at Asbury a few months later and different things. This was before that. God says, October 17th of 2021, there should be a resetting in your colleges as there'll be a great move and awakening that shall visit the campuses that liberalism will be grabbed by the throat and brought down. Wow. There shall be a resetting in your schools and the what is telling us. And I will cause a shaking and a dissatisfaction among parents. And, and we're already seeing that. We're going to be with Lou Engel in just a few weeks in Fort Worth, and he's mobilizing a bunch of women to stand for their children in the place of Washington, D.C. And God said, even among those who've raised children, they'll say, we want our schools back. And God says, this is the reset that I'm talking about. It's all part of his season. When you see the extreme heat and all this, it's part of the season of the great fall. All right, I want to go to the next section. Um, this is... Uh, uh, you know, by the way, did they show slide, um, th this one we need to show real quick. Show um, sh slide 15. I want to just read these headlines real fast. It says, 
A law now allows Ten Commandments to be studied in Utah's public schools. Oklahoma State Superintendent announces all schools must incorporate the Bible. God's been prophesying this. And the Ten Commandments in the what? Notice what it says. In the what? God, we just read the prophecy that said the curriculum would change. God, this is 2024 they said that, but the prophecy was from 2021. Now look at the next one. Slide 16. Trump loves Ten Commandments in public schools. Says Louisiana law could be a major step in religion revival. This is from Trump. I don't know who to vote for. <laughs> Come on. I don't like his personality. Come on. All right. Anyway, I don't want to. Let's go on to the next one. Slide 17. At least he has a personality. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Uh, yikes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about this. So, to Kent Christmas's point. It's been a three and a half year drought. It, it's been dry. It's been tough. How many of you would say, honestly, that you've had some kind of challenge in, uh, over the last three and a half years, respectfully? And we're not glorifying it. We're not glorifying it. it you know, okay. It's just where it's been. But then the prophet shows up. And this is what I was sharing with Kent. I said, Kent, but the prophet shows up in 1 Kings 18, 41. And he says, at... at uh, he says, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. There was no physical proof that there was anything beginning to change. No sign of rain, not a rain cloud. But then look at verse 45. This is so, you, you got to see this. And it came to pass. So what came to pass? What the prophet heard, what the prophet said what God spoke through the prophet. This is where we're at in our country right now. We've been in three and a half years of a drought and God is saying, listen, it's coming to pass. This is my season. And the heaven was black with clouds and wind. Okay. There's going to be some natural signs in the elements because that's what you would have. If you're looking there, you'd say, oh, the elements, oh, there's a black cloud. There's a wind. But then, and there was a great rain. So I like also what one translation says, and it happened. This is what I want you to see. It's happening. You know, when I get back from vacation, if God wants me to share it at this time, I'm really going to talk about the danger of complaining. Because we all, we've all complained. I even complained today, and I caught myself like, I'm not ready to preach my message until I get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to go on vacation, God, you know, and, and then I caught myself and said, well, I need to, <clears throat> I need to study this out first before I bring it to the people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Otherwise I'm a hypocrite and I don't want to be a hypocrite. All right. So look here at slide 17. So the sign that change was happening was what? Rain. Okay. We were in California in December at Cheyenne's church. And Pastor Gene said, uh, Pastor Frank, do you have anything? And the Spirit of God began to prophesy. And he said, uh, God said, there will be a, a sign giving to you, California, but also this nation. And it will be a sign. Men have looked to a rainbow, my rainbow. But he said, uh, others have said, God, you're showing up in a double rainbow. But the Lord says, can I do something that will shock you? I will release a triple rainbow. They had a triple rainbow at the end of January. In California, it was gorgeous. You can go and research it. You'll see it. And then God said, and I will cause it to rain, 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 California. And then it will rain, rain, rain in abundance over you, United States. Do you know California had an abundance of rain right after we left, like, I don't know, like 30 days or so. You remember that. And then look at what we've been seeing. Because it's a sign heat all of this of God's season to show us that there's a shift. The prophet said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. No evidence, no proof, no manifestation. Yet there was a release of it and it finally caught up. That's what I'm trying to say to you. We are now seeing the prophetic words starting to manifest at a rapid rate, not just from this vessel, but from many others that God is using, even you that are out there. So look at slide 17. I'm going to read these very quickly. Watch the rains, February 2023. 20, they shall bring a cleansing. Um, 
slide uh, 19, uh, March 21st, 2021, with the abundance of rain and the mountains that are blowing their tops, the ground shall shake. Come on, you're seeing all of this. Because they will not have to live in socialism or unrighteousness. So why are all these things happening? God's trying to say, look, I'm coming. And the earth is responding. Hell is responding. Wicked man is responding. And it's to break this spirit of socialism and, and injustice. Because he said, look at slide 19. And those of you that are listening by the phone, he said, this is not the future that I've declared that will be this decade or the future of your children, says the living God. All right. Um, De December uh, 31st, here it was, New Year's Eve service. God begins to prophesy. Slide 20 said, now there's ominous dark clouds will be gathered across the earth. And men will say, what is this? We've not seen it like this. Come on, we saw that in Omaha, two mile wide cloud. The heights, the depths, the width, the darkness of these clouds. And God says it's to show that the season is changing. And the downpours of rain shall be great. How many are seeing this? Okay, now he says, yet pay attention. Oh, wait, go back. Much will be done in the first five months of your year to spin it out of control. Okay, we saw that. To bring confusion, lies. Okay, he said, yet pay attention. As spring comes, there shall also be a great wind that arises that will begin to take place that will accelerate you through your summer and bring preservation over this land of what they seek to do. I will frustrate their purpose. Oh, stop right there. Have they not been frustrated? Yes. He's got to go. I'm, I'm staying. Right? And they are frustrated. Are they not? Okay. The liberal news, fake news, what are they doing? We didn't know. Yeah, y'all did. Right. It must be really great to go to school and uh, pay all that money or... You know, go to school and sit there all day so you learn how to lie. I, I think there's something really wrong with a person if they're like that. And it, politics aside, it's called morals. It's called human decency, right? Um, all right, is there anything you guys want? Slide 21. Men shall look to the seasons of the earth. Now, pay attention. As the spring rains come, the flood waters rise. Yeah. What do we just see? Yeah. And tornadic winds begin to blow across the earth in this nation. So he's saying these are some of the things you're going to see. Summer, high, summer heat rises, but does not compete against the spring winds of heat. And yet early the leaves fall in the time of summer. What does this mean? Has fall arrived? Is it an early fall? So God's going back to tell us. It's not about all the things. Don't try to hold God to a certain thing. Realize it's his season. And he says, there are but signs in the natural of what, which has come now. It's the beginning of the end of my season. Aren't you glad Amen. that I pronounce upon the earth at this time? For it is the season of my great fall. It's the season of the divine reset, unraveling and reversals that shall come now upon this planet. To you, United States, because of the injustice, because of the things that have been done in dark places, I will expose it at the level that you have said would not happen, but it shall. Amen. I think we should show some headlines real quick. Uh, Anthony, why don't you pick up some of those headlines, slide 24, 25, so people can see sure. some of that. All right. You have to now put it in perspective. And the perspective is this. This is not just a natural battle that we're having to face with some of the things that you know, has been harsh. You know, we talk about, you know, egg prices, gas prices, inflation, you know, all the things that we've had to face. Open borders, you know, right now wanting to give uh, illegals uh, immediate right to vote. Okay. It, it's been a crazy, crazy season. And you've got to go back. Remember what God said on January 6th to this vessel. He said, tell the people, Hank, you must stay with the story. That's why I'm not shaken, I'm not moved, I don't flinch. I know what God's been saying, and I'm watching his story play out. And what God needs is you yeah. to respect his heart and respect it enough that what he reveals and what he wants to do, that you are in agreement with it. You know what I'm saying? And, and that you honor that. Um, how many of you ever had a time where you shared your heart and somebody didn't respect it? 
You know, it's not a good thing. Well, I always try. I always say to God, God, I don't ever want to disrespect your heart. If you say something, man, I want to, I want to say it like you say it. I want to represent your heart. That's why these words to you, you might just think they're just words up on the screen. To me, this is God speaking his heart. He's revealing it. And, and I, and I feel a tremendous, um, honor and a tremendous respect to it. And, And so I want to take you back now. God said, stay with the story. Okay, well, what's the story? Maybe you could set up this part about New York. Um, and and we'll, we'll read the parts in red to save time. Yeah, so, I mean, this is going back to, what, probably 2018, 2017, where these really started coming out about the specifics. Obviously, you've yeah. had more from previous years going back to the Well, remember 9-11. What was the word on yeah. 9-11? Out of New York, I will raise up a president that would bring this country back on course. So you have to understand, God's been sharing this story. Yes. And then there's prophecies that we've shared many times, and you can go out to One Voice TV. I think it was the last prophetic pulse we did. We talked about God saying he was going to raise up a mystery out of New York. And the, one, and the mystery out of New York, that say he's not Christian enough. He has too many wives. Mm-hmm. Remember that? We shared those prophecies. Uh, then then it, uh, it said, um, the one from New York, God says, I've got a mystery card. Okay, 2006, 2007. Then all of a sudden he tells you, he says, I'm going to trump the enemy. Yeah. Okay, I remember what year that was before Trump came on the scene. And then he starts revealing the year that all of this is going to begin to come where he's going to reveal his card. And it was in the 240th year of America's reign, which was 2016, which just so happened to be this candidate, President Trump, born raised new york city comes on the scene just like the prophecy said so we're going to show you a few of those right here but for the sake of time i'm not going to show you all the ones that reference specifically donald trump you need to go out to onevoicetv.net look them up um, and and it'll help explain so should we start slide let's i'll I'll just start it here slide 26 and i want you to comment anthony uh as i get some of these out and okay for discussion um Slide 26, I want to share a mystery, says the Spirit of God, for there will be a battle over the city of New York, and it will be a battle for the White House. How many are seeing that play out? Okay. Why did it come down in 2016? President Trump, Hillary Clinton faced off. Why did it come down that Hillary went to New York of all the places and opened up a place to campaign? Okay. Was it, 20, no, did I say 2016 or was it? Yeah, 2016. And, and guess what it was called? Yeah. Tower 45. Yeah. What presidency was she after? 45th. Yeah. She wanted it. She didn't get it. And so why this battle over New York? Now go to the next slide, slide 27. Um, it says, God says, watch the place of New York. It shall come down to this city. For men have asked, why New York City? And the Lord begins to tell you, for the blood, the sounds of weeping that still come into the ears of the Lord Sabio. I've not forgotten America, not forgotten the day the towers were struck. And then he goes on and he says, now listen, look at the red. Once again, they will attack, but they will attack different and they will cause confusion and a dividing of the nation of who shall stand in the White House. Yeah. Now we're going to reveal God's get, in, in, in the next section here, pay attention. God says, there's, I'm going to reveal now, there are those that are coming that will cause confusion. Has there not been confusion? Yeah. And he said, I'm also going to, he said, reveal those that are creating a dividing in the nation of the one who's going to stand in the White House. All right, look at slide 28. God says, I've told you the mystery that it shall come down to the city of New York and there'll be a great battle in the heavens. So he's telling you, this one I'm raising up out of New York, the enemy's gonna hate it and it's gonna cause a tremendous spiritual warfare. Now, why of all the years, 2016, that God would raise up what he's been prophesying out of New York, Hillary comes in, gets Tower 45, Jezebel had a tower, now you have President Trump, Hillary Clinton, and they're fighting. They're battling for the seat of authority over our country. Pro-life, pro-choice. That's good. Are, you, are you hearing me? Mm-hmm. And, there was, and, and so God says there's a spiritual battle. The number 16 and the number 6 is a very significant number. 
In the Hebrew, 16 and 6 means, it's the Hebrew word wa. It means a conversion between heaven and earth. In other words, it literally means a colliding. Notice how two kingdoms collided. When President Trump won in 2016, remember Hillary, she went and she could not even face the crowd. Because she could not figure out how in the world that all the, the deception and evil that they did behind the scenes didn't work. And from that moment President Trump came down the elevator, uh, escalator, the fight was on. And God's going to reveal to us something very interesting. How many saw the headlines about the spider? That is this weird spider that's appeared. Do you know God prophesied that ahead of time? We're going to show you these prophecies. Now watch. Uh, slide 28. God says, I tell you a mystery. It'll come down to New York. There'll be a great sign or battle in the heavens. For as you see this happen, some will be angry. Some will be confused. It is a sign that the rain is falling. It is a sign fire is falling. Do you see it? But it's a sign that there's a shift. This is 2007, November 24th. It's a sign that a shift is about to happen. Now look at slide 30. I want you to see this. God tells us when this is going to happen. Do you not understand? This is April 6, 2016. I've said to you in the year of your 240th year of your reign, I shall raise up a reform. Now, there's a previous prophecy from 2010 and 2012 where God specifically says, look to the 240th year. That's when it's going to begin. And remember those? I showed you those prophecies to verify uh, what I'm telling you is the truth. So God's saying this one out of New York, it's going to create a battle in the heavens. Spiritual warfare, the, con con the colliding between right and left, right and left wrong. Right justice, left injustice. And they're going to be a colliding. And it's going to, it's going to be a battle for this country. Now, <clears throat> now look at this next section. And then I want you, Anthony, to comment as I set this up. Look at slide 33 real quick. People are like, well, what's God's plan? Don't you know he's got all of these verdicts against him and all of these things you know, he's, he's, a, he's a felon. That's what they want you to believe. If they can create a narrative, a false narrative, okay? I, I met a man the other day, and I even hate to tell you this. I met a man the other day, and he looked at me, and he, he, he goes to this church. And he's uh, going to become a member. And he said, Pastor Hank, he said, I heard about you. So I started trying to figure out who you were. I had to go through so much evil things that they are saying about you out there before I finally had to just listen to what God is saying through you. And I got so mad at what they're doing to you. And he said, does that, it's not right. And I said, don't worry about it. Jesus had to make himself of no reputation. I'm not comparing myself to Jesus, but I am to walk. We all are like Christ. It's not about us. It's about him. And it's about other people. And so, so I don't know it at the level, obviously, that President Trump does. But how many of you ever had people say nasty things about you? Untrue things about you? You could spend your whole life trying to defend yourself, answer your critics, or just move on and be who you are privately and publicly and let God be your defense. And so here's the thing. I say that because they smeared Netanyahu. They smeared President Trump. That's what they do. If they cannot try to ruin your reputation through accusations yep. and lies. And can I tell you, he said, Pastor Hank, I said, well, it, I, I know it's the, the lying media. He goes, yeah, that was out there. He goes, but it was coming from Christians who didn't believe in prophets calling this. I'm like, well, you know, they have to deal with God. It's true. Right? Yeah. Ultimately, they have to deal with God. He's the one that's watching. And so uh, our job is to just keep doing what you're doing and stay in the spirit. But I want you to see this prophecy as a reminder of what God is saying. Slide 33. I'm putting my hand even stronger upon two men in the earth. Remember New York now. Remember Israel. Both men have had indictments against them. They both tried to throw them in prison because it's a spiritual war. And evil men cooperate with these satanic forces. 
God says, two men in the earth I put my hand on. You'll see it, and there's a celebration that is happening in the spirit realm. This anointing is going to increase, and their voice shall become louder. Their positions will be granted and given, and it will be stronger. I speak of, who does he mention first? When that prophecy came out in 2021, we had nasty after nasty mail coming calling this false and that wrong because it looked like that man was going to jail and blah, 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 blah. Well, who is in power? Okay, and now look at who he mentions next. And the second person I speak of, Donald Trump says the living God. The enemy thought that he could divide Israel from the United States, but I say I will rejoin their hands again, says the living God. I will rejoin their hands. I'll rejoin the nations. Israel and United States, I'm not finish. You shook hands, Netanyahu and President Trump, and there's still assignments that must happen that both nations will have their return and their what? Unmasking. Woo! Let's see who's under that mask. All right. So take us to the next section about the spider and let's fill in the blanks here. We've talked about all of this. Now we're going to show you God saying there's something behind all of this. It's a demon, and he's telling us what demon it is, and he's, he's telling us um, what, what this is about. Okay. Yeah, so these prophecies starting on, I think it's slide 36, is that what you want to start, Pastor? Well, let's, um, let's look spider. at, let me look at this real quick. Um, slide 30, let, I want to make sure, uh, you guys did a great job, let me put it together. Okay. Um, slide, yeah, read slide 37 okay. and we'll, we'll consider this one on 37. Okay. So how many remember Pastor Hank's recent prophecy about the spider, the big, big spider? It, it was, it was interesting to see how many people were so quick to send the headlines. This is the, the giant spiders coming, blah, blah, blah. And, and that, that's, that's great. But you have to remember about prophecy is like Pastor Hank was saying, it's a narrative. So it's not just a breaking news headline where you can just say, look, here it is. You got to look at what's connected to it and what God is trying to say as a result of said sign. So if you actually, we did some digging and we found that this thing about the spider has been, Pastor Hank and it has been prophesying this. The Lord has been prophesying this since 2017. And it deals with a particular spirit that we have been seeing rear its ugly head uh, well, at, at the peak of it around 2020, but this has been in the background since 2017. So I'm going to read this where it says, uh, June 14th, 2017, for they are plotting, says the spirit of God, and the head, it has formed its web. It uses the web and has planned to use the web by way of cyber. For this one who is known as the spider, for there is a spirit that has been released, a spirit from hell, and you call yourself anarchia. So God's telling on the spirit. And you have said that you will create great turmoil against this administration. So 2017 would be Trump's administration yeah. and this president. And you, spirit of anarchy, you said, we shall create just enough where people will believe it, where people will not trust the government and will rise up against it. But look what the spirit of the Lord is saying. This shall fail, for there is a moment that heaven has looked to, and it is this month of a heavenly assault to shake everything that can be shaken. Okay, now I want to say this one. All right. So how many know that there's not good doctors and there's good doctors? There's not good policemen and there's great policemen. So in 2017, God calls out the FBI, the CIA. This is in 2017. Calls out these uh, organizations. Now, how many know what's been all over the news? People are, are saying they can't trust the CIA, the FBI. Now, that doesn't mean they're all bad. There's some good people there that work there. Yes or no? Yes. There is. But look at what God says on slide 37, June 14th. He says, this shaking shall release the vulnerability, the lies that have come from the CIA and the FBI. And there shall even be a shaking among what sh shall come by way of secret service. And it shall be shaken in the media. And there are those who are being paid by secret organizations to create false news. Wow. Fake book, Twitter. What did they do? God said this in 2017. They would be paid to do this. And they're being paid. For the Lord God of hosts is about to touch you and bring you to light. The corruption does not just touch the CIA, the FBI, even the secret service, your media... 
He's calling out the media. But this corruption has touched the Supreme Court. And in secret, they did not legislate just according, uh, just according to the bench. They legislated according to a secret. To a gathering of those who speak into the ears of some who call themselves justices. God has had enough. These aren't my, my words. Look at slide 39. 2017. There's a demonic pattern that the enemy has sought to bring to disrupt, to interrupt, to bring blow after blow, storm after storm, and to cause one to loop and to seek to strike your land, your coast, and that which would seek again to hit the gulf. So he's talking about storms and man manipulating the storms. How many catch in this? Mm -hmm. How many of you say, what's the big argument today? Man manipulated storms. God's saying, this is true. It, it, it's happening. And the Spirit of God says, listen, pray against the spirit of anarchia. Pray against the spirit of division. And I shall cause you to be weathered from the storm. He's talking naturally and spiritually. Protected from the storm, for there's a great storm, another storm that is trying to form and move towards this land, this nation, to attack you again. Spirit of God says, lift up your voice, begin to declare unity. That's why we need you at the opening of the heavens. Yes. Speak to the storm of anarchia. Speak to the storm of division. Speak to the storm of racism. I can and will disrupt the pattern that seeks to bring storm after storm. So he's not just talking about hurricanes. He's talking about this storm of where they keep using the race car to divide us. They keep using, right, uh, J6, insurrection, fake stuff. It's anarchia. It's the spirit. And these people used the Pelosi's and others to do it. Okay, now let's go to slide 40. This is June 9th, 2024. So this is this year. God says, what is this? Look, there'll be a spider. And it shall have great width to its web. And you will say, what is this large spider that's appearing in America? Do you know this just happened like a couple weeks after this? Now, it might have been before. I don't know, but... Headlines came out right after this prophecy. And with its legs. And God says, I speak this in the natural, but pay attention because when you see this revealed, in other words, when you see these headlines, which came out, which they did, it is a sign of one who they call spider. Now, didn't he just tell you in 2017, there was one who's operating behind the scenes that are dealing mm -hmm. with some of these government agencies and things that's creating a web of problems. How many of you follow tracking with what I'm saying? And it's all connected to this mystery of New York. How many are you starting to see why Christians are, are, are led? I, I don't know who to believe. I don't like his personality. Do you not understand you're sliding right into the spiritual warfare? You're sliding right into their web. And he says this, great is the reach of his web. Great is the ensnarement of this web and the anarchy, he repeats it again seven years later, that has been created and perpetrated by this one who they say spider. And they've conspired. They've worked together to seek to ensnare 45 and you, the people of this nation, to entangle you in their webs of lies, deceptions, and narratives. But when the spider arises in this nation in the natural it will be a sign that all of this shall be cut down and brought to a place now that the verdict of heaven shall be seen now through justice in your land. Okay, now, Matt, read slide 41. Because this is...